Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. With that, I've received a lot of comments and feedbacks regarding the Zoom R20 multi-track recorder uh, about its synth capabilities that are built in, its, its rhythm uh, capabilities, and really a lot of stuff regarding the touchscreen and how you interface with the touchscreen. One of the questions that I've received several times in different iter in iterations um, is regards to how do you import WAV files into one of your projects so you can actually use some of the material that you already have or you have short samples or loops that you want to kind of use over and over again. I wanted to you know, clarify that a little bit with a few of the things that uh, I've been able to learn using this device. I've been able to import all of my loops and all of my samples, no problems, all my tracks, no problems. Um, but there are a couple things that you want to think about when you start to import your own uh, WAV files, your own audio files. The first thing that you should probably do is if you're using an SD card, you have the SD card in the Zoom, is to have the Zoom format the card for you. So if you go into the settings, it'll say SD card. When you click that, I'll zoom into the screen a little bit here. After you click into the settings for the SD card, it'll say format. If you just touch that, then it asks you to execute. It's really quick. It'll format your SD card for you then. After that, I recommend that you go ahead and create a project to get yourself started. So if we move back here to projects, we can go ahead and just have a new project, hit create. It'll create a new project for us. This just sets up your folder system a little bit easier in the SD card. So once you have that in place, you don't really have to do anything with the project immediately, but you can eject the SD card out of the side of the Zoom. And I'll tell you that you don't have an SD card found. I have uh, right here a 64 gig uh, SD card. So this is an uh, SD card that's an XC version, uh, extra capacity. So once you have this, this is formatted, it's all kind of set up, ready to go for your ability to start to add files to it. And in that file tree that you'll see when you put this into your computer, you'll notice that there's a folder called audio. So for the audio folder, that's where you want to drop in your audio files. I'll go ahead and drop in uh, two different mono tracks here. So these are two different mono tracks that I created before that are from the video game Rygar that I had a cover with a pocket operator. And then I'll also drop in a stereo track. And that stereo track was a pocket operator track that was a cover of a Metroid uh, video game uh, cover from the, the Brinstar level. So I'll drop that in. Well, I've got my three files that I've now added into the audio folder. And with that, we can then eject our SD card out of the computer and bring it back over to our Zoom where we could put that in and start to work with these files to import the tracks into our projects. Okay, so once we have all of our files loaded up onto our SD card, we could put that back into the R20, boot everything up, and we can go ahead and just open up a project. So we have that project that we didn't do anything with. We'll go ahead, open up that one. And if you want to add in a file, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Right now, track one is highlighted and selected. We can simply touch track one on the grid. If you touch the number one, you're given delete, export, and track settings. We don't want that. You want to touch it on the grid. So touch track one on the grid, and now your option is to add an audio file. If you click that, we can go to SD card and we can load in our audio files. Now it's important to note that whenever you're trying to bring in audio files that they do match what is the, um, the different bit depth and the sample rate for the R20. So the R20 really its standard rate and uh, bit depth is 24 bit and 44.1 kilohertz uh, sample rate. So you wanna have WAV files that will match that. But we can load in one of our mono files. So I've got mono Rygar 00 and mono Rygar 01. I also 
mixed and matched capital letters and numbers and I have an underscore here to I wanted to test out to see if any of the punctuation makes a difference and it seems like it will recognize most of the punctuation. The only time that I did run into a few issues is when I sometimes had an extra period in there because it'll have a file name period wave. If I introduced extra periods in there, I did have a, uh, an issue with one file that I tried to, I tried to load that way. Um, so if you are adding extra periods into your file names and you're running into problems, I would suggest changing that. But if we want to load in a mono track, so let's load in a mono track, hit the plus icon. You can also hit the play button to preview it. But we're just going to go ahead and drop it in there. It asks you to change the track name if you want, or that file name if you want. We don't need to do that. The larger the file, the longer it takes to import into the R20's uh, track structure. So this will drop in that file for us. And you can see we've got the WAV file now in track one. I'll highlight track two. Let's go ahead and drop in that other mono file. So I've touched the grid on track two, add audio file, SD card, mono Rygar 01, hit the plus button, enter, and we'll go ahead and let that drop now our other mono track onto track two for the R20. So we could mix and fade these things together. You can add effects um, and I'll show you Yep, it did it exactly how I thought it would. Sometimes you might get this. You may have a WAV file already in track one. You just tried to drop something into track two. And what happened to my WAV file? You think that it's not working. Well, it will drop in the WAV file wherever your uh, timeline marker is at. So right now, after we dropped in that WAV file for track one, it moved the timeline marker all the way to the end of track one. So if we zoom here, you can now see that's where it put our new mono file in track two. It was at the end of track one, and you can see what happens there. The uh, timeline marker is all the way at the end of our mono file for track two. That's a very easy fix with the touchscreen. So with other types of multi-track devices, this would be not impossible, but still just kind of a pain. With the touchscreen, it's really easy. You just highlight it and drag it over, and now we know that they're perfectly aligned hit the stop button, we can bring that back and we have our two mono tracks ready to go. All right, so you can see that it's a really easy way to drop in your tracks that you may already have created. As long as they're WAV files that are 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, it should work for the most part. If your tracks are stereo though, you do have to do uh, a little bit extra work before you can import them. So I'll go ahead and delete these by just clicking them and then hit delete, execute, and click the track again one more time, delete, execute. So let's try to drop in that Metroid stereo track. I'll touch the grid for track one now that it's empty, add audio file, SD card, I have stereo Metroid track. If I hit plus here, I'll get an error message, different number of channels. That's because I only have one track that's highlighted. I cannot drop a stereo track into a mono track. Easy fix, this time touch the number. So we're touching number one, and this would work for any of the track numbers that you wanna add your, import your uh, WAV file into. So I've touched the number one, use track settings. The first thing that you need to do is stereo link. So stereo link your track one, turn that on, and now you notice it becomes track one, two. This is now primed and ready to go for accepting a stereo track. I touch the grid on that one, two that's simultaneously highlighted, add audio file, SD card, stereo Metroid wave, hit the plus icon, hit enter again to confirm the file name, and it's a stereo track. It'll take a little bit longer to import but it should work and it'll deposit the left and right tracks onto tracks one and two. So once that's in place, everything should look okay. And indeed it does. It looks like we've got our stereo track in place now. That's working just fine. 
If you wanted to start to play around with these uh, stereo tracks, or if you have mono tracks, you want to combine them into a stereo track, you can mix down your tracks by selecting the track, and then you can um, select your, your faders if you want to see where your faders are at. Once you're, when you're at the fader view, you have the option to hit mix down. So if we tap mix down and we turn that on, it will now mix down whatever tracks we have highlighted, whatever tracks we have active. If you have 16 tracks that are ready to go and you only want to mix down two of them, you can simply mute the other tracks. Um, and that's accomplished by going back to track view and you could slide the track drawer out and mute any of the other tracks. So if you click that, it'll turn it like a yellow color. That's how you know that those tracks are muted. So you can then close that up and we're back here. So we could come over here. And again, if we wanted to mix down our tracks, we could do that. The other thing that you could do when you have tracks one and two highlighted, because it's the stereo track here, is again, touch the numbers, track settings. And if you want, you could even add an effect. Um, send hall effect, that's fine. If you have whatever effect that you have on, you can click these this little icon over here on the right and it'll show you the different effects that you have kind of analogous to having multiple like guitar pedals in a row we've got like a low eq we have a room effect if you touch the individual uh, icons for like what those pedals look like the virtual pedals look like you get all the different settings for what's in slot two so for slot two we have a pre-delay a decay a balance um, a tail we can adjust those parameters if you go back we can then click for slot number three that's a hall reverb effect and uh, same kind of thing we've got a pre-delay a decay a balance and a tail so when you have all of those in and selected then you just have to hit the send effect and turn up the uh, send level we'll keep it kind of mild here at 20 and now when you are trying to mix down, you simply go ahead and forward. And now you can play with the faders. And adjust your mix down in real time. So however you manipulate your faders here, that is going to show up on your, your final mix. But that's how you can import your track, you can manipulate your tracks, you can add some effects, and you can mix them down. Hope you found this video helpful. Uh, as always, I appreciate your likes, I appreciate your comments. I'll try to get to all the comments um, that I can and answer your questions as I go along. Uh, but with that, thanks again, and I'll see you around next time.